Bro, thank you all for coming and helping us honor our veterans this day. Uh, it, it, sort of just thinking earlier, what it says is engraved on the stone over there sort of sums up what were the sentiment of the day. That all gave some and some gave all. But that's a very, very potent statement. And now, Pastor Bill Thomas. No. Pastor David Broadbrand, excuse me, will help us with the invocation. Thank you very much. Reverend Bill Thomas was called away on an emergency, so I'm happy to be able to fill in for him today. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in your hands are the living and the dead. And we give you thanks for all those, our brothers and sisters, who have laid down their lives in the service of our country. May they rest in peace and may perpetual light shine upon them. May the good work of seeking justice for the oppressed and peace for all mankind be rewarded with success, that their sacrifices shall not have been in vain. And may we never fail to remember the awesome cost of the freedom which we enjoy today. Be with us, God, as we pause in our busy lives to remember that some gave all and all gave some. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. 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 Now at this time, Lisa Blanchett from Summer Memorial High School will lead us in the National Anthem. <coughs> short message from our town manager, Sherry Cox. Good morning. Uh, thank you all for coming out on this beautiful, I was going to say sunny morning, but we'll be hopeful and maybe later. Um, thank you for coming out to remember our fallen heroes and honoring them. Yesterday, our uh, pastor played a short video uh, of Ronald Reagan doing a speech in Arlington Memorial, uh, an Arlington National Cemetery in 1982. He said, the United States and the freedom for which it stands, the freedom for which they died, must endure and prosper. Their lives remind us that freedom is not bought cheaply. The young men and women that have laid down their lives for all of us were just that, young. 18, 19, 20 years old for the most part. They never had a chance to enjoy what we all enjoy. Lifelong friendships, marriages, babies, 
grandbabies. Yet often when we think of our fallen heroes, it doesn't always register that we miss that part. Um, they didn't get to experience the things that we are all lucky enough because of their sacrifice to, to experience. They ensured not just our freedom, but our whole lives. <coughs> Yesterday, I went to visit with my 99-year-old grandfather, who was failing physically, but mentally is as sharp as a tack. He was telling us about being in Saipan during the war and coming under attack. You know, and the, the details might have been a bit sketchy, but he remembered that he was one of the lucky ones. He came home. He got to have a job for 45 years and live a normal life with my grandmother for 65 years. Had us grandkids and he's lived to see grandbabies and great grandbabies. And what, but what better way can we honor the sacrifice of all these fallen heroes than to do just that, live our best lives that were gifted to us. So I want to tell you all, enjoy your day with your family, your friends, your pets. <laughs> enjoy what's been given to you. And I'll leave you on this note. Um, it's a quote from Jennifer Granholm. Ceremonies are important, but our gratitude has to be more than visits to the troops. And once a year Memorial Day, ceremonies. We honor the dead best by treating the living well. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Now we have a guest speaker, Linda LaJoy from the Silhouette Project, here to tell you all about the project that she does. <coughs> Linda? Thank you for inviting the Silhouettes and me here today. Thank you for the opportunity to honor the brave men and women uh, uh, represented on the Silhouettes. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Linda LaJoy and one of those Silhouettes represents my son, Dustin. Dustin served in the Air Force for six and a half years. He spent time in Afghanistan and there is some evidence that he may have spent some time in Iraq as well. He would not talk about his experiences over there, but I know part of his job required him to be outside the wire. As a civilian, I am blissfully unaware of exactly what that means. I only know it's not a good place to be. I would like to start by reading a poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow called Decoration Day. Sleep, comrade, sleep and rest on this field of grounded arms, where foes no more molest, nor sentries sharp shocks alarm. Ye have slept on the ground before and started to your feet at the cannon's sudden roar or the drum's redoubling beat. But in this camp of death, no sound your slumber breaks. Here is no fevered breath no wounds that bleed or ache. All is repose and peace, untrampled lies the sod, the shouts of battle cease, it is the truce of God. Rest, comrade, comrades, rest and sleep. The thoughts of men shall be as sentinels to keep your rest from danger free. Your silent tents of green we deck with fragrant flowers. Yours has the suffering been, the memory shall be ours. Every year, every May, for over 150 years, America has been honoring heroes lost in battle. In, it started on May 30th in 1868 to honor those lost in the Civil War. And has become, <clears throat> and that has become a day for American to honor all those who paid the ultimate price for our rights and freedoms. It is a day for us to remember, honor, and thank those who gave 
their lives for our country. We hear poems like Flanders Field, and we are reminded that freedom is not free. But why? Why do we take a day out of our busy lives every year for Memorial Day? Why do we gather at town memorials and cemeteries every year? Because we need to recognize the sacrifice. We need to remi be reminded that freedom is not free. We need to take a day to understand the cost to our military, our country, and most importantly, the cost to our families, our friends, and our neighbors. Most recent research and census data puts the number of Civil War dead at 750,000. World War I, we lost 53,400. World War II, 416,800. In Korea, 36,914. In Vietnam, 58,318. The first Gulf War, 382. The wars in Afghanistan and Iraq have taken the lives of 6,954. Many more have been lost during training exercises, peacekeeping missions, and other American and UN conflicts over the last 150 years. We are here today to honor and thank each and every one of those men and women for their service. Without their sacrifice, we would not have the liberty and freedom we have today. But there's a much larger number of war casualties that we have not honored because their deaths have been looked upon as shameful, selfish, weak, and even disgraceful. I speak of those men and women that have lost their battle to invisible wounds. The men and women that take their own lives after ensuring our lives will be free. We have now lost more Vietnam veterans to suicide than was lost in the war. One of the estimates stands at 100,000 that we've lost to suicide. The number of Iraq and Afghanistan veterans lost to suicide far exceeds the number lost to wars. We are losing our heroes at a rate of 22 veterans and at least one active duty military member to suicide every day. A few months after I lost my son, Dustin, who took his life in December 2014, I was told I shouldn't talk about how he died. And there was no way that we could ever honor his service to our country. Because I was told, we don't want people to think they can become heroes simply by taking their own life. This is what I was told. These men and women you see on these silhouettes signed the same blank check as every other service member we honor on Memorial Day. The difference is we couldn't see the wounds that killed them. I believe by not honoring these heroes and their sacrifice, we are turning our backs on those living and struggling with these wounds today. I believe I speak for all mothers who have lost a child when I say that my biggest fear is that my child will be forgotten. I sincerely appreciate this time to honor these men and women and say their names in hopes that they will be remembered. The 20 silhouettes that we have today are all from Maine and obviously local communities. Um, so I would like to read the list of people we have here today. Dustin Hadfield, 26, Lewiston. Cassandra Casavant, 21, Cornish. CJ Toomey, 21, Auburn. Phil St. Amon, 47, Durham. Kevin Willette, 34, Raymond. Joseph Murphy, 23, Orrington. Casey Chapman, 21, Pittston. Ryan Love, 34, Frankfurt. Cody Winslow, 28, Lewiston. Patrick Maloney, 32, Waterboro. <coughs> Richard Hart, 26, Topsom. Raymond Martell Sr., 43, Biddeford. Raymond Martell Jr., 64, Biddeford. Benjamin Demers, 26, Auburn. Jamie Ray Lovett, 30, Waterville. Corey Bryan, 25, Richmond. Dustin Paul, 26, Old Orchard Beach. Jesse Melanson, 34, Richmond. 
Mickey Obrin, 45, Topsom, and Ivan Taggett, 74, Hamden. These are all sons, daughters, husbands, wives, brothers, sisters, and in some cases, grandfathers. Every family that I've spoken to have said their lives are forever changed, and these men and women will be forever missed. During the Civil War, the doctors called the crippling anxiety that many soldiers and veterans experienced, they called it hysteria, melancholia, insanity, and soldier's heart. In World War I, it was known as shell shock. In World War II, they called it combat fatigue. Today, we know it as PTSD. It is important that we not forget the sacrifice of these men and women. They did not die because they were weak or selfish. They died because they came home and their buddy didn't. They died because they saw atrocities many of us cannot and would not want to imagine. They died from the inescapable war that played over and over in their heads. In short, they died of soldier's heart. Um, thank you again for this time. Uh, it, I'm gonna be around talking about the Silhouette Project. If you have questions, come ask me. Um, and I do have uh, cards and information I can hand out for anybody that may be interested. And thank you for bearing with me, and thank you for, for letting me honor these brave men and women. Thank you. This time we'll have the placement of the wreath by Marcus Buckley, United States Army, retired. Thank you, Mark. Now Richard will play God Bless America for us.
Thank you. Now we'll have a moment of silence for fallen heroes. Okay, on the back of your programs are the words to the singing of taps. I'd like to do that now. Somebody will be so kind as to lead us. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you that your blessing be bestowed upon our friends and loved ones. We thank you for this opportunity to share with them this special occasion to honor our veterans. Let us always honor the memory of those brave men and women who sacrifice so that we may experience freedom in a country that is free. Heavenly Father, keep their families in your kind care. Bless them and comfort them in their sorrow. And let us be reminded of life, liberty, justice, freedom, and democracy, that we may be ever grateful to you for those veterans who gave so much for their country. We ask your blessings upon this program, and when we depart, grant us your continued fellowship that makes abiding peace. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Closing, I think I have a few thank yous to put out. Thanks to our first responders. We're always there. Thanks to the people of the community for being here. We greatly appreciate it. And I just want to leave you with the same thing I said last year because I think it's very important for this day. It is not just a day for barbecues, shopping, we're having a day off from work. This is a day when all Americans should remember and reflect upon those who have fought and died for our country and now lay in peace. Thank you for coming today. <laughs>